was almost three years ago I cut down this large coastal redwood tree both to make room for my sawmill and this shed extension I made two inch slabs thinking they might come in handy someday so they've been drying here for almost three years I was thinking at one point I would sell them as slabs but then I got a lathe a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago, just after I got the sawmill, I guess, and I uh, realized there was potential in these things for bowls and platters. So I decided rather than try to sell them as slabs, I will keep them and turn them into bowls and platters. I'm going to take one and mark it out for bowls and cut the blanks and show you how I do that to minimize waste. I hate waste. But this one is from somewhere near the middle of the tree. Probably near the butt too because it's pretty wide down there. So we'll take that one. Let's we'll start down here. Inside the bark Oh, what is that? 12 and a half inches. This is the wide side. The other side's a little bit narrower. So 12 inches we can get out of this. So that'll be this hole here. That's on the edge of the wood there. Inside the edge of the wood here. Come over a quarter of an inch. Okay, and now in. Any cracks in there? Nope. So, 12 inches there. It's in wood. All the way around. Down this way a little bit. And pencil in the 12. And there's a 12 inch blank. These are too small to make anything practical out of. Now we've got a complication here. This big knot. Oh, is it on the other side? No, it's not. It comes in here and up to here. But it still would be a major flaw. So I think I ought to take a bowl out inside of that and that is going to be we'll maximum get about six inches out of that I think so let's see here that's six there that clears this one it doesn't clear that okay six six that clears everything so I'll take a six inch blank out here. Now that leaves an odd space over here. Now here's where the uh, cardboard cutouts come in handy to give a rough idea of what I can get there. Seven inches. Six. Six is better. And if I put it right up in here, it almost gives me room to get something out of this. Not quite. I like seven better. Well, let me see. Let's see what we can get in terms of a big one. a 12 and so it went till the entire slab was covered in circles my original plan was just to cut these out with the jigsaw my jigsaw will not go two inches deep 
So I cut them with a skill saw and a hand saw, trimmed the round on the band saw. And stop there. Do the same thing here. And stop there. Then There's one, there's two, and so on. I'll turn this around to do the other sides, then cut straight across when there's no obstructions, and then we'll take them inside to the bandsaw. It'll be noisy. Kent Weekly of TurnerWoodBowl.com has a rule. Fingers no closer than five inches to the bandsaw blade. Can't do that with a four inch block, but whenever the fingers of my left hand are close to the blade and in line with it, I curl my fingers up and use my knuckles to guide the piece and pull with my right hand. There is no free space to stack the blanks, so I just toss them on the floor. The safest way to remove offcuts is to reach behind the blade. Word about bandsaws. Compared to other tools such as table saws, I've never considered bandsaws to be particularly dangerous. Don't have years of experience with a bandsaw, but after watching Kevin Corney's recent video on what happened when he got a little careless, dull blade, pushing too hard, and almost cut the fingers off his right hand. Ken Weekly his rule is fingers do not get within five inches of the blade. Obviously with a four inch, three and a half inch blank, I can't do that. But my fingers are not out here. My knuckles are out here. My hand is firmly based, flesh in this groove. And I'm pulling from the back and just guiding with the front. Just keeping it centered. I'm not pushing toward the blade. Uh, thank you, Kevin Corney, <laughs> for making me Sit down and think about this entire operation. This hand has been through my table saw, my former table saw, four times. I still have all my fingers. It's amazing. Good luck. I don't want to push it with a bandsaw. So, knuckles, fingers back, pull it round like this. This little finger is in this groove. 
it's not going anywhere since something slipped. Okay, no more preaching. Get back to it. Case in point, this blade is getting a little dull. I'm going to sharpen it up here in just a second. If the blade is not perfectly sharp, and you're putting pressure on it, when it lets go, it's going to move. If your fingers are out here, they're going in there. Keep them back here. Push with your knuckles, not in the line of the blade. So even if you move, you don't get cut. A little R and R time. Time and card. Only two more of these triangles and the slightly larger ones. Another thing, the bigger the piece you're working on, the easier and safer it is. Wider radius turns are much easier. Your fingers are nowhere near the blade. So I did the small ones first because I know me repetition breeds wandering mind and I don't need my mind wandering here but I would rather have my mind wander while I'm working a piece foot and a half across than one that's an inch and a half across. So this one's 13. I think that's the smallest of the big ones. Anyway, this should go a lot easier.
nothing exciting from here on out. No bloodshed, no accidents, no mistakes. And I ended up with 23 blanks out of that one 9-foot slab. The biggest is 16 inches, which I'll have to turn on the left side of my lathe. And the smallest is about three and a half. Now I get to turn them into bowls and platters. Thanks for watching.